Today, we're going to discuss a few reasons as to why Sean Strickland is the next UFC superstar. Yes, I said it. Can Mr. Mandance himself become the next Conor McGregor, the next John Jones, the next Israel Adesanya? Let's break it down. Sean has been in the UFC for quite a while now. His first fight was against Bubba McDaniel at UFC 171 in 2014, but he's actually been fighting since 2008. It's not like he's a newbie to the game. He's seen the likes of McGregor, John Jones, GSP, Anderson Silva, all the highest UFC pay-per-view fighters come and go. So it's safe to say he knows how marketing works. And I think Sean is smarter than he'd let you believe. I think he could become a really big name within the UFC. Let's look at the roster currently. Who really stands out in terms of personality? Not fighting style, because there are a few exciting fighters out there who've got the personality of a potato. So what we want to look at is marketability factor. There's not really a lot off the top of my head marketability wise. We have John Bones Jones, Sean O'Malley, Colby Covington, McGregor, if you want to include him, Oliveira, previously Nate Diaz until he left. You've got some fighters on the rise like Ian Gary. You could say someone like Paddy Pimblett, but we'll see how he gets on in the toughest division. You've got Kamzat Chimaev. So these are fighters who I think stand out personality-wise in the UFC. Comment below others that you can think of. So the total pool of rising stars isn't that deep. There's still a huge wide open gap for someone to come in and shake things up and I believe that could be Sean Strickland. The reason I believe he's in a category of his own is primarily because of two things. Number one, he really doesn't give a fuck and number two, he's actually quite smart, wise and switched on underneath the I don't give a fuck attitude. Now you could say that Nate Diaz has the I don't give a fuck attitude but he can barely string a sentence together at the best of times. McGregor but he hasn't really won since January 2020 against Donald Cerrone and before that it was in 2016 against Ed the Alvarez. Damn, I'm getting old. So as much as I am a Connor fan, I really want to see him fight or retire. Stop this in-between behaviour. Now, Connor has always been vocal about wanting to be super rich, super famous, and have all the money in the world. He was destined to become an A-list celebrity, and a powerful lesson that one of my mentors taught me. We love seeing someone on the rise because it reminds us of our dreams. The problem is, is once they get there, they remind us that we give up on ours. So then, that support slowly turns to hate and resentment. You might have had this happen in your personal life. You start chasing your dreams, people support you, but as soon as you actually get there, all that support slowly drifts away because you just remind them of their failures. But anyway, fighters like Sean, on the other hand, don't really care about money. He's stated on numerous occasions that he fights to pay for his hobby, which is training. Without training, he's nothing. He says it's the only thing he really has to live for and the only thing that really makes him feel alive. But the way you fight, you fight with something else. Where do you fight from? You see people go through their life and it's boring, it sucks. Every day they wake up in routine, they go to the job, they sit by the pool, they grab a beer, they drink, and they're just waiting to die. I love what I do. It's scary, it sucks, man, but you're in there and it's like, it's, it's meaningful. It's the only kind of meaning that we have in our life. It's real. Guys get hurt, guys can bleed. Like, it's, you're just, it's something so primitive that, like, as much as I hate being in there and I think it shortens my life because the mental mindset, man, like, it is the only time I feel like I'm alive. It's the only time that I feel like I'm just not waiting to die when I'm in there fighting. Even though I hate it, it gives me purpose. As you see, this makes him more relatable because he will never come across as rich and famous. Therefore, the success that he achieves doesn't seem unattainable for the average Joe. The fact that he comes across as real subconsciously makes us think that we could do the same. If we hung out with the big money makers like McGregor or Izzy, sometimes we can have that deep down belief that if we're not wearing some sort of designer gear or act in a certain way, then we might be judged because they are so successful and in such a different class to us. Whereas if we hung out with Strickland, he probably wouldn't care if you'd had gravy stains on your t-shirt. He'd probably rip you about it, but he's not the type of character to judge you about it. He comes across as working class himself, the type of person who wears the same clothes every day, no designer gear. He doesn't try and be something he's not. Now, this is just a hypothetical to demonstrate. We look at others and judge them on. Does that person look like they would find me relatable or not? That's why we hate most politicians, because they were born rich and therefore can't relate to us. Whereas for people like Trump for America or Nigel Farage for the UK amass a large loyal following because regardless if you hate them or love them, the things they say come across realer and more relatable than what other politicians say. They speak to the average Joe, to the working class man, the people with the small businesses. I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> and Sean is that guy who you could have a pint with and chat shit with all night in the pub. He's not holier than thou. He knows he's not perfect. He literally calls himself white trash. I couldn't say shit because Dana White would be like, hey, go fuck that white trash motherfucker. Get him out of here. 
But now, since I'm getting a little bit more like, you know, fan base, people want to watch me fight, I could say a lot more offensive shit, so it's nice. Now I'm just gonna be the white trash motherfucker that I am. Nice. The simple fact that he self-deprecates when he jokes around makes you think he's not trying to be someone he's not. He's not trying to paint himself out in the perfect light. He's not putting on an act. Although, he has many insecurities and for good reason. Yeah. To go from everything you've been through to now holding that belt that says you're the baddest man at middleweight yeah. on the planet. But what do you think about that? Yeah, thank God for child abuse, right? Fuck yeah. Let's go childhood traumas and repressed memories. You fucking, you, you really, you got me to where I needed to be, man. Like, fucking dad, you, you're fucking awesome, man. All, all of the years of abuse, you really, <laughs> you really made me the man I had to be today. <laughs> I don't fucking know you guys. When you hear this, it's no surprise that he's got to where he is now. But for every Sean Strickland out there who's went through trauma and turned it into something positive, there's also thousands of people who've had that trauma and made the life go to shit. There is always a decision. It's like that story of the dad who's an alcoholic. He has two sons. One son becomes an alcoholic. And when asked why, he says, well because my dad was an alcoholic. And then the other son never touches drink in his life. And when asked why, he says, because my dad was an alcoholic. They were both motivated by the exact same thing. They just chose different paths. Sean is a prime example of someone who took that trauma and chose to not go down that same path where he passes those traits onto his kids. There has to be someone who breaks the pattern. I also didn't really have a great, fantastic upbringing from my dad, but his dad was pretty awful and his dad was awful and the dad before that was awful and that cycle just kept getting repeated and I'm happy to say that I'll be the first one who's actually going to break the cycle of bad parenting but that had to be a conscious decision and choice that I've had to make and also I think this is a great opportunity to address the insecurities thing. I put a post up on my community tab talking about the fact that when I'm training and I'm in shape I'm not that small and all the people who said that Bradley Martin would ragdoll me are delusional because I'm actually strong, not small, and I'm really well trained. I had a bunch of people comment saying, this screams of insecurity. Wow, you're insecure. But since when did you become so perfect? Are we going to act like everyone doesn't have insecurities? Because everyone does. It could be an insecurity of being accepted by others. It could be an insecurity of letting your guard down or getting hurt in a relationship. It could be an insecurity of not having many friends or close friends who you can truly rely on and truly trust. It could be an insecurity of not having enough likes or followers on social media, or maybe one of the biggest insecurities of all, fear of rejection or failure. It's very easy to call other people insecure when you're not taking any risks and you're in your little protected bubble and you're not challenging yourself because you know if you do, you're going to be faced with potential rejection and failure. And insecurities can come from various sources, loss of a loved one, going through some sort of traumatic or life-changing event, damaged or low self-esteem, the lack of a stable influence in your life, we know this is true for Sean Strickland, exposure to bad parenting or an unhappy childhood, once again, Sean Strickland, physical or emotional abuse, once again, kind of sounds like Sean Strickland. So yeah, I'm not scared in saying that. I've got insecurities. I've got a constant feeling of wanting to prove myself, to prove I'm good enough, to prove I can be successful, to prove to doubters and haters that I'm better in whatever aspect you want to talk about. In this case, it was fighting because it's something I've done all my life. I have this fuck you, watch this energy about me, which I use to propel myself forward towards my goals. I always have done. Show me a man without insecurities and I'll show you the man who's never had any adversities or hardships to overcome in his life. I'll also show you someone who doesn't challenge themselves or maybe someone who just buries it that deep down that they don't even realize having insecurities does not make you weak letting them keep you down and hold you back is what makes you weak sean strickland is a prime example of this but he uses his trauma to his advantage also he trains non-stop spars every day maybe to escape his thoughts but in doing so he's now become the ufc middleweight champion of the world and has got impeccable striking defense he's turned something bad and traumatic into unbelievable success and that's why i believe we should celebrate his victory at the end of the day there's a reason reason why Sean has been trending all over Twitter, YouTube and Google this past week. Look at the views on his post-fight interview. That view count isn't really typical. And the reason being is Sean represents the non-polished fighters. The gritty, in-your-face, unrelenting pressure fighters. With that, the average Joe, the working-class man who's bricklaying all day, can come home, crack open a beer and watch Sean Strickland and be entertained. Potentially more than watching someone like Israel Adesanya with his anime quotes. And that's the thing. Izzy is also relatable. 
but just to a smaller crowd, the anime crowd. It's a smaller niche and a smaller pool of people, which is why I believe if Sean can go on a title reign, he could be bigger than Izzy because he appeals to a bigger part of the population. Fans like Paddy Pimlet and Molly McCann, they brought all the Tory haters and all the diehard Labour voters over to the UFC. Let's not get into that. But it's a niche at the end of the day, and Sean Strickland has got his niche, but it's a really big pool of people. Now, some don't like him because he's brash, he's in your face, he swears a lot, he's very politically incorrect, and he says things like... You believe fat shaming is okay if the person you're fat shaming is someone you love? I think fat shaming is always okay. I There's nothing worse than being next to a fat, smelly mother And the most human thing you could do is telling a fat, smelly mother to put down the fork. You know, if you can't see your fucking you're a little bit too fat. If you gotta lift up a rule to see the you're too fat. If your stomach looks like a and you're naked and a guy doesn't know which hole to put it in, you're too fucking fat. America, you guys, we're all a bunch of degenerate fucks. You know, like, I, I was talking to one guy, like, I was joking about, you know, growing up and my dad fucking snorting oxys off the table and my mom trying to bang somebody, you know? And, and this foreigner comes up to me, he's a UFC guy, he's like, Sean, Sean, why, why would you disrespect yourself like that? I'm like, dude, do you know Americans? We are so really fucked. Like, we have so much fucking degeneracy in our, like, who we are. I can't even pretend not to be a white trash motherfucker. He's pretty funny and pretty wild, but we have to ask how much of this is an act or him dialing it up 10 notches for the camera. And yeah, he says messed up shit, but how many of you people watching this right now have had similar thoughts? Don't lie and pretend that you don't have the occasional messed up thought from time to time. We all do. Now, whether you choose to voice it or act upon it or not is your own decision, but we have to accept that some people have less of a filter than others. And Sean's a prime example of someone with no filter, which is another reason why he could become the UFC's next megastar. He says the things that people wish they could say, but they can't because they'll end up getting cancelled or fired from the jobs. This means people will tune in to see what he says and to watch those moments of, oh my word, I can't believe he just said that. Thanks for the guys in the comments who are recognising that I'm working on me blasphemy. Appreciate it. Even the last few years of Sean Strickland being interviewed on YouTube channels like The Schmo and Helen Yee Sports, he's always the one who's brought in the most views because he's unpredictable. Oh my God, you're probably an Izzy fan, aren't you? You <laughs> well, he, hey, he told the Sifu, okay? He told Sifu he's gonna knock you out for China. Who the f is Sifu? It means master. Oh, f I have no master. F Izzy. I mean, of course, Izzy has a master. He's f China's little. S I mean, what? I always call him the Chinese champion, right? And I, I don't think that's accurate, you guys. And I'll tell you why. Because Izzy's words himself, he only did it for money. So is it more of Chinese champion or the Chinese all this crazy behavior and the wild shit he says, taking into consideration he's a pretty humble guy. He's humble enough to train with the guy who knocked him out cold, Alex Pierre. Most fighters would never do this, but he dropped his pride and his ego and he got better for it. As I say, he's a pretty switched on dude. Watch this clip from when he was on the Nelk podcast. I always tell people, I was watching, um, I was at my niece's house once and I was watching like a kid's show with them. And there's all these like adult commercials, not like adult commercials, but like, you know, it's like, really, it, it's like, you know, like maybe like Fox or something. And all of a sudden like a car commercial comes. I'm like, why the fuck are they playing this for like kids hour? Like this is where all the little kid cartoons are on. And, but they do that because they're indoctrinating generations by generations. For instance, how much you guys are you not married, right? No. When you go get married, what do they say? What's the role buying a girl's a, a wedding ring? There's a role to it. Oh, it's a percent of your net worth. I forget. It's a it percent is. of your net worth. And you are indoctrinated from fucking birth, being brainwashed by the television that when you get married, you go buy this. When you get married, you have this Audi or fucking Mercedes. It makes you better. And the reason why they're able to indoctrinate kids is because they've they have made a an environment to where you can't be involved with your kids. Now it's like both parents are working. What are you going to do? I'm going to give my kid my cell phone. So he shuts the fuck up and I can go to work and he just shuts. I just worked eight hours a day. Last thing I want to do is fucking deal with my kid. Hey kid. So easy for them. To just hand them a have fucking a phone. Go look at this shit. IPad go to look them. at this yeah. shit. Go get consumer. Go get indoctrinated. So when we're talking about the girl mm. who goes <laughs> and makes her fucking family money, dude, huzzah. I hope you're fucking happy. But to me, you're pimping out your kid, dude. There's so much. There's so much more to life than, than fucking money. And again, it's easy for me to say that because I have money now. 
and I could go to Starbucks and buy a fucking latte for six bucks and not even think about it. So he's pretty switched on and he isn't going to be politically correct for anyone. Expect him now to do a lot of podcasts because whether you like it or not, podcasters know that people like Sean Strickland bringing the views because he's saying what everyone thinks. Most people in this day and age are politically correct and that's something that I'll never be on this channel either. People want realness and authenticity and that's why you guys say that you like this channel because we just try and be ourselves. We don't try and act like someone we're not. Some people like it, some people don't. Now there's always downsides to being as outspoken as someone like Sean but the beauty of it is he can also be really authentic with his emotions and not have any fear of judgment. Literally bro, never in a million years would I thought I'd be here man. Like, I don't Try much, but I'm trying to keep my together right now. Sean, everything you have been through, my man, in your life has always propelled you on to greater things. Those life lessons allowed for you to put on one of the most masterful performances as a challenger and a big underdog tonight. Hold on. Hey, you guys, I love you guys. Just remember the gold around my waist don't mean bro. Your home life, how you're living your life matters way more than any title you guys and I'm living better for you guys too you guys thank you I don't know about you but I really like this side of Sean and it doesn't come across as inauthentic whatsoever if anything Izzy comes across as the inauthentic one he humped Paulo Costa when he knocked him out but then begs Sean Strickland to not say anything bad on the microphone about his dog because he wouldn't do it to Sean when we know very well if Izzy would have got on the mic he would have went in on Sean and being brash and braggadocious whereas Sean expressed a lot of humility and that's why Sean Strickland has got the potential to become a superstar one thing you know you're not going to get with Sean is bored and copy and paste answers like I train hard you guys best camp yet we'll see Saturday night who wins just listen to any Amanda Nunes or Robbie Lauder or even Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje answers. There's not really much uniqueness to them. Whereas Sean Strickland, he's unpredictable. And that's why Sean has got the potential to become a superstar. Granted, it might be short-lived. He might lose his first title defense. But I don't know. My better money is going to be on Sean from here on out for the next few fights. I like him as a champion. Out of the whole plethora of fighters that there are, I think he's one of the more relatable ones. I personally would like to see how far he could take this title reign. In a world full of fakeness and boring personality, Sean stands out. We also have to address his social media growth. He's been banned about four or five times on Instagram. At the start of this year, he had about 30,000 followers, and now he's on 654,000 followers. And about 300,000 of those followers have came since his fight on the weekend. We got Sean O'Malley, we got Sean Strickland, and we got Sean Jones. The Seans are taking over, so make sure you subscribe and like the video. What do you guys think? Comment down below. How many title defences is Sean going to put up? Do you like Sean as a champion? I want to hear your thoughts. Appreciate the love and support on the channel. And I'll see you all tomorrow.